Hey, so for a while there, uh, I was playing this same community again and again in my videos called the End Timers, and uh, I've kind of left them alone for a long time, and I think it's about time I wrapped up that game. So let's get into the End Timers and uh, see if I can make some progress towards their legacy. I've uh, I just beat the Trader Legacy uh, in the Dread Zone. I think these folks are a builder legacy. They're a builder team or whatever, uh, builder community. Am I correct about that? Let me, uh... Ted? Yes. Ted is a builder. He's a damaged builder, but he's a builder. And... Yep, we're all out of plague hearts. And so, so one reason I actually want a legacy in my communities is, is both of the communities that I've been playing lately, um, they've killed other plague hearts, and, uh... You'll notice my bounties. Oh, you won't notice my bounties because they're behind my head. Uh, my bounties up there uh, include killing plague zeds in close combat. And uh, I can't do that if there's no plague hearts. So you can tell I'm in Whitney Field by the sheer amount of gunfire that's going on. So at some point, this guy's legacy missions are going to start popping. Let me... See, so what am I equipped with right now? I, I've forgotten a lot of these characters now. I remember really liking this team. Oh. Yeah, Sasquatch, whatever. Hmm. So Awesome Twitch Dude says, During the Undead Lab stream, the uh, Stay Frosty pack says it deb debuts in December. Can you confirm? Uh, I mean... If it said that on the stream, I mean, I'm they're the experts, not me. Uh, right now, I'm pretty disconnected from uh, from the State of Decay team because I'm on sabbatical. So, and that's going to be true for another two weeks. So, uh, I am not the person you want to ask about up to date State of Decay news. Anyway, so I'm a sharpshooter. Uh, I got endurance. Okay, so I'm pretty flexible as far as what weapons I use. What am I doing? So I'm carrying around an RTX Crusher. Uh, oh, a sighted Mark III. I like those. I'm actually kind of bare bones here. Busy? So I wonder, I should probably grab this guy a fancy gun. I think I originally grabbed that, uh, that pistol for this guy, partly because I like that pistol a lot, but partly because I had a, for a long time, I was going after this one bounty with, uh, that was about killing a million bloaters with pistols. But this guy doesn't need to have a pistol. And I've got a bounty right now about killing Juggernaut, so I should get something that is a Juggernaut killer. Like, oh man, I I really wish it was easier to get my hands on 44 Magnum rounds. That's something maybe we should work on, making that a little easier. Because um, I love some of these you know new weapons, like the Mayor's Leg and the Model 92 that uh, that came out with the the open range pack. But unfortunately, that's not going to really work. The blunderbuss is nice. Looks like this team is really low on ammunition. And I'm, I'm low on the ammo resource. I'm low on bullets. Maybe this is not the team uh, that I should run around killing juggernauts with. Maybe what I really need to do is wrap this team up and start a new one. So what bullets do I have a ton of? Basically just the 22s. Okay, well now I know why he had that target pistol. So you know what? I'm not going to worry about killing a bunch of juggernauts. I am going to keep this target pistol on me. I gotta say, my other team that I've been playing for a while uh, does seem to be better equipped than these guys. Alright, so I'm still... so I'm waiting on... my leader to spawn a mission. I hope I don't have one of those bugs where... Where they mis where we miscounted the uh, plague heart. No, no, it wouldn't say establish a legacy if it miscounted the plague hearts. So yeah, I guess I just gotta kind of wait. Well, you know what? I'm not gonna tire out my leader while I'm waiting. So why don't we instead grab a different character? Oh, Flores is just tapped out. Um, there's Milan. There's Jose. Who do we want to grab here? Let's grab Mattingly. Because, waiting for host. That's me. Oh, wait a minute. Am I am I in multiplayer mode here? Let's. Nope. Okay. Good. 
Okay, what have I got? Oh, almost. This must be a new recruit. She's got crap for weapons. That is just not going to do at all. So if we manage to get through this entire session and my legacy mission doesn't spawn, I might have a bug to report. <laughs> All right, so... Oh, should, we don't even have... What is up with this team? We've got garbage. Okay. Well... 357. I've actually got surprising number 357 rounds available. It looks like I should not rely on ranged weapons at all, though. So let's see what. Maybe I should just get her a crossbow for sneaky emergencies. Okay, let's look at the map. Maybe there's someplace I can scavenge for ammo. Got some. Uh, there's a, okay, there's a barn up there. Already been partially searched. Anything else? Okay, another farmhouse. Okay, oh, it's a farmhouse. It does say it has ammo, though. Um, um, we got a military trauma tent. Okay, so there's a few places I can go. This team needs some ammo. So until the game figures out how to spawn the legacy mission... I guess we'll, uh, let's get her a gun just in case she needs it. Like, just in case she runs into a feral, basically. Which means I can grab something that uses some kind of rare ammo. Like, oh. Okay, this gun is too nice. I kind of don't want to <laughs> use this gun on somebody who is, uh, this much of a newbie. Not that that actually means anything, but whatever. All right, let's let's just grab a shotgun in case a feral shows up, but plan not to use it too much, and then we'll head out. All right, so we'll hit up this barn first, then maybe this barn, and then maybe we'll head up to the to the trauma tent that was up here. Oh, well, we've got a bunch of chat here from, from Awesome Twitch Dude. Let's see. <laughs> awesome Twitch Dude says, Two more weeks, counting down the time until I am back in the office. Uh, I'm actually kind of enjoying my sabbatical, so, you know. Let me, l let me hold on to this for just a minute. <laughs> Don't be counting the days until I go back. I mean, I love my job. But I'm also loving this time with my family. So I've definitely been here before. Ah! Oh, we've got that audio delay again. Oh, that's so weird. We had this before, previous session. Is this consistent? this is consistent then we can probably fix it is it just your first session anytime you come back okay let's see if we can fix this all right so let me just let's just confirm this is definitely happening oh yeah yeah that is definitely happening okay let's exit the game and then come back in and see if it fixes the audio bug if it does I've definitely got a bug report to write because this happened before. I started a game, had the audio bug, and then when I went back into, I think, did I load a different save? I'm trying to remember what I did exactly. But I came back into the game, and the bug wasn't there. Oh, Ranith Cord, you're absolutely right about what's going on. Um... So, okay, uh, Ranith Kord diagnosed the problem, and of, and of course I, yeah, so because I had somebody else's 
uh, leader mission or proto leader mission uh, active, that's in the same category as the legacy mission. I forgot about that. So I think we might have made a change in an upcoming build of the game that would make that not happen anymore. That sounds really familiar. Thank you for it's so funny that you, you folks out there, you actually understand the game better than I do, or at least you, you know, you think of the an right answers faster than I do. But okay, so we do have the builder legacy ready to go. We'll, we'll deal with that once we get back home. But let's see how the audio's doing now. Dang, it's still delayed. This is so weird. Well, okay, I definitely have an example for when I want to report this bug. I'll have to uh I'll have to share this I'll have to share this video with Jurgen and Henry, let them figure out what's going on. Ah, get off my car, you jerks. Alright, anyway. Okay, so what I was really doing was... Oh yeah, I was going to finish searching this place for ammo. I might have... Because I've already partially searched this place, I might have already taken out all the ammo. This might be futile. What's over here? Awesome Twitch dude. No, we're not adding astronaut outfits. I'll just I'll just stop you right there. <laughs> so still loading Jake asks, is it strange playing a game you worked on? Do you notice things that others might not? Um, I definitely I probably definitely think of the game differently from other people, but the problem is because it is oh because it's so thoroughly my perspective, I don't actually necessarily know what it is about the game that, that is different for me, for somebody else. I mean, there's definitely, like, I go through phases where I've been playtesting the game enough on my during my work hours that I actually have trouble playing it for fun. Okay. I've seen what there is to see. Right now I'm not in that zone, obviously, because I'm on sabbatical. Um, but that, I've definitely been in that zone in the past. I try, to st I try to avoid getting into that emotional zone, though, because me playing the game at home is so helpful to my job, you know, during during work hours. Uh, you know, because a huge part of my job is to try to bring sort of a, uh, you know, a player's perspective to the game, basically, to be able to sort of uh, anticipate the experience that players are going to have and try to plan ahead, you know, to, to you know, to take it into account. And uh, it's so much easier to do if I'm actually playing it as a user at home and not just play testing it at the office. But yeah, so like when I, when I see a bug... I don't just get like amused or frustrated. Uh, I actually immediately start thinking, okay, why is this happening? Who do I tell about th tell th this to? You know, how do I describe it? What are the reproduction steps? Because yeah, this oh man, this audio delay is weird. I wonder if it's only on the Series X or what. Because it, it definitely stopped last time. The last time we played, I did two sessions. One, during one session, oh, hey, I got a new shirt. Or a new, oh, lizard hoodie, iguana, nice. Um, I did one session just playing directly on the Series X. And then I did another session where I was doing remote play. And the audio worked fine on remote play. I'm wondering if that's actually relevant. Like if if whatever whatever situation was causing this audio bug, if somehow it when I'm in remote play, the situation is different and it, and it doesn't happen. That might be relevant. Oh, hi guys. Work. 
it's so funny after you know playing in the uh lethal zone and then watching other people play in the lethal zone my dread zone gameplay just feels pretty light by comparison all right like i feel like you know right now i i for a long time i played exclusively in the standard zone and i felt like you know that was just my level and then i recently started trying to play in the in the dread zone because I felt like, you know, I've finally gotten decent enough at my own game that I could pull that off. And now, actually, the Dread Zone is starting to feel too easy. Like, it's starting to feel like I don't get challenged quite enough. And, and maybe it's because I've been playtesting, you know, the Lethal Zone. And, like, I've been setting my levels there. And so now I come back to Dread Zone and it feels like standard. So still loading Jake asks, uh, has there been much change working with Microsoft, or are you able to still work as you did before? Uh, by the way, I love the UI now, the Juggernaut Edition. So yeah, thank you for the, the saying nice things about the UI. Definitely a lot of thought and work went into that on um, on the side of the you know, UI and UX team. Um, I really like things like, uh, like I especially like the way that the, um, the legacy missions look now. You know, they're, uh, they have that sort of like blue-green kind of color to them, so you sort of can tell which ones are important. One thing we learned about the game, about you know, our audience, is that a lot of folks, a lot of new folks of the game, don't really understand, like, it's not easy to tell which missions are, you know, important for progression and which ones are just side missions. I mean, really, kind of everything in our game is a side mission. Um, you really kind of decide what you think is important. It's not, there not, isn't really some hard and fast rule about what's important and what's not. But for a lot of people, you know, they really want to know which things are sort of core to, especially if you're new to the game and you want to sort of get to an ending um, as soon as you can. You, know, you want to know what's core to the experience and what's a sidelight. And so that sort of, that color scheme that we use for the opening missions and also for the legacy missions really helps with that. What did I come over here to get? Oh yeah, I wanted to grab, oh, toolkits. I want to grab some toolkits and heal up that car. Adam Beltran wants to know if we're ever going to get the uh, the Bounty Brokers vehicle uh, to drive. Uh, we, we thought about that. Uh, no promises, but that would be pretty fun. Oh, so anyway, um, I forgot. I didn't actually answer uh, Jake's question. Jake asked about if there's anything different uh, working at Microsoft. So, uh, so far, no. I mean, the, the way that they've approached it really is like they 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 told us basically you know we bought this studio because we like the way you guys work already so the last thing we want to do is come in and tell you how to do your business and so they haven't been all they've done is sort of like um given us the freedom to keep supporting this game for as you know for as long as we want to we we're basically setting the agenda we're, we're deciding you know what our strategy is with with the the franchise that, that we're working on um and and so we just we actually if anything have more freedom now because whereas before when we were sort of a you know a privately owned studio um you know where the next paycheck was coming from was a big consideration and you know, we if we wanted to keep having jobs and keep paying people uh we needed to make you know really good you know like immediately financially beneficial decisions um and that and that can you know be challenging when you're trying to sort of balance the need to you know the need to make uh certain creative decisions against business decisions and actually working at Microsoft has actually sort of alleviated some of that. I mean, Microsoft is still very careful with its money, and, and it's not like we just get, like, infinite resources to do whatever we want. And that would be, Microsoft would run out of money real fast if that was how they, how they manage things, and they don't manage things that way. But what we have is sort of long-term stability. There's not a question of how are we going to make ends meet four months from now, six months from now. Like, we know we're going to be around for a while, and so we can make our decisions based more on, you know, our creative ambitions for the franchise. And so actually, if anything, we have more creative freedom now than we had when we were independent. So it's 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 been really good. <laughs> Adam Beltran asks if we're using Unreal Engine 5. Uh, so, so we haven't, um, we haven't, like grab the latest absolute latest version of, of the unreal engine uh since you know we've been working on state of k2 for a really long time uh for you know we started using the unreal engine years ago and so um now and then i think we will we'll grab you know uh 
you know, new additions they've made here and there, but a, gr doing a whole hog update, grabbing the entire latest version of the Unreal Engine would be heavily disruptive to a game that's built on the assumptions of the previous version of the engine. So no, so we have not done a full scale upgrade to Unreal Engine 5 because honestly, that we, it would probably take all of our code resources for ages just to, you know, uh, just to make everything work with it with a complete grab of the latest stuff. That is at least my understanding. I just realized I am probably going to be sending a link to this video to programmers at uh, at, at the studio. And, and every time I describe something technical um, in one of my videos and then one of our programmers sees it, they tell me that I said something horribly wrong. So don't take my word for it. I am not a technical person, but I believe that that's the situation that we're in. <laughs> So Sarnathium is listing uh, publishers that he's glad didn't buy us, and I'm not going to comment on any, any of that. Um, what am I doing? I am taking control of Ted, because we want to make progress towards our legacy. Ah, we're doing the thing where we recruit a million people. Ooh. Yes. But wait a minute. Wait a minute. What happens if I... Can I still change away? Okay. So, here's the problem. I just accepted that mission, except I have not equipped all my characters to be valuable... Um, to be valuable legacy pool members you know I, I want them to be carrying a bunch of really cool stuff so i think i've just canceled that mission yep but at least i know now that it will spawn so that's good so let's let's now that we know we're right up against the final legacy mission which i didn't realize uh let's get everybody equipped and then hope that that legacy mission spawns even if i have to leave and come back to make it spawn like i did last time okay so what has she got Fake A47, actually one of my favorite guns in the game, so I kind of want to let her keep that. Um, is, yeah, okay, that is a 36 round magazine. Is there any? So, is there anything else she should carry though? So, I, there's certain guns that I definitely want to hold on to. The ones that are like special bounty broker guns. So, she should carry at least one of the things, some a sidearm or something. Oh, let's see here. What kind of person is she? Oh, wow. Oh, she's a blank slate. She doesn't have a fifth skill. Endurance, assault. Okay, so she's pretty flexible. Let's grab... I don't know, F45 tactical. And... She doesn't have a fifth skill, so what we should do is just give her one of every single textbook she can be whatever you want and I don't know oh wait oh firearms training manual I should use this on somebody because I don't think I don't think I've ever used one in my home game I don't think I even have the achievement for it so yeah I don't know let's give her some Loader cloud grenades. Okay, next. Flores. Okay, yeah. Flores is a favorite. <laughs> Still loading Jake asks, asks if we're going to see any more of Sasquatch in the future. And he acknowledges that I probably can't answer the question. So, I mean, uh, Sasquatch is one of our favorite characters. Um, so, I mean, it would be weird of us not to include him. Uh, I don't, you know, I, I get it. As you know, I can't make any promises, but yeah, I, it would be strange if we just dropped Sasquatch after loving him so much. Okay, so Flores appears to be a resourceful person. Oh no, she's just an everything person because she's Red Talon, that's right. Okay, well, let's get her some really good stuff. So what does she got here? She's got Horde Breaker. That is appropriate for a Red Talon person. Don't want to mess that up. Um, let's give her at least one additional gun, though, like this Safari Razorback. Which is yeah, 44. And then because she is I 
So you can carry. Oh yeah, let's get rid of all the C4. All of the C4. And she's not going to need a mechanic sex because she could bring one for somebody else. And let's give her some weird consumables. Oh, a bunch of Willy P grenades. Absolutely. She should just have all my maxed out consumables. All the consumables. There we go. All right, next. Milan. Okay, Milan, who are you? This one fight. Oh, you're also a blank slate. Nice. Let's give you a chemistry test textbook. Let's top off your meds. Let's. So, what have you got here? What weapon is this? Oh, you got Eternal Guard's Infinite Rage. Okay, yeah, you can keep that. But let's grab some other stuff to share with folks. Like, oh, spyglass rifle or. Oh, FBI fight. You know, he looks like an FBI fighting rifle guy, honestly. Because he's got sort of a World War II era sort of look to him. Um, any other World War II Oh, yeah. Silent Night. Let's grab a Silent Night. Um, so just, I, I don't like the idea of um, losing any of this valuable stuff, right? So you got to keep it in a place where somebody's going to get it. And do we have a? Okay, yeah, we do. Somebody got. Somebody's got to keep that spyglass rifle, but maybe not this guy. Maybe not right now. Let's grab him one more fancy gun, though. And ooh, yeah, we're gonna run out of, run out of people to give all these things to. Let's get him an MPX. Okay, right, yeah, well, that's probably good. Uh, Jose. He also has a little bit of a World War II vibe to him. What is he? What's he packing? Ooh, wits. He is also resourceful. That's nice. Endurance and assault, so nothing too exciting. And he's carrying... Oh, competition mark three. Still one of my favorites. So how are we going to load this guy up? Oh, I love the Stormbringer. Let's save that for somebody else, though. Well, maybe... Should this guy be my pirate weapon guy? Maybe he'll be my pirate weapon guy. And don't really need to hold on to that. Um, and maybe that'll be his, you know, weapon with the cheap ammo. And let's stick a break on that. He's just going to be a loud guy. Top off his health. And I don't know, some flares, firecrackers, why not? How about a little fire, Scarecrow? Um, all right, over here on the left side, we got Wexler. Oh, okay, this is my other Red Talon guy, I think. Yeah, Red Talon guy. Okay, cool. He's got an M4A1, but he's the guy we should give the Stormbringer to. Oh, and I haven't been giving... Oh, I haven't been giving people fancy melee weapons. What's he got? Extermination Blade. Makes sense. Let's grab him a wrench just for fun. Let's wait. Do I have a mechanic? Let's make sure. If I've got a mechanic, they should get the wrench. Sure. Uh, medicine, utilities. Oh, she's my auto mechanic. She should get the wrench. Let's put that wrench back. Take that wrench right back. Let's grab my tow hitch club, though. And then I've got that Stormbringer. He should definitely keep that. And do I have any... Okay, I do have ammo. 556. Five, and oh, let's give him the sniper crossbow. Why not? 
looks good. Okay, let's let's just grab Roth right now. Her weapon is not in great shape. Oh, it's from the World War II pack. Cool, cool, cool. Wait, what am I doing? Come over here. It's so fun to watch somebody prepare a legacy, isn't it? You just watch them like just do a bunch of maintenance on their characters. Wow, what an exciting stream you're watching right now. This is great. I'm sure you're all having a wonderful time. Um, okay, so she gets the wrench, definitely. Um, she can have the shovel too, why not? And... Okay, so she's got a World War II gun. Not in the best shape. But you know what? She's also kind of a noob character, so I don't kind of don't mind that. Oh, the golden vulture. <laughs> okay, let's give her this. I should give some of these to one of them, a more favorite character. I think she's still kind of a noob, so I don't know her that well. I mean, let's just give her a couple of my more garbagey things, because why not? Yep, that's fine for her. All right next okay kylie kylie is a favorite i haven't even put an outfit on her because her native outfit is just so perfect kylie's gonna get some good stuff she's already got the aks oh yeah she's got the valentine she's got the pink gun <laughs> oh she's great okay i'm gonna the thing about her is i'm gonna remember her which means i'm gonna think of her as somebody who probably has cool stuff so I'm going to give her a bunch of those cowboy weapons, because I love those cowboy weapons. They're probably not her style, so she'll probably end up sharing them with somebody else. Let's give her the vulture, too. I know it's a lot of stuff. What, what does she have in the way of melee? Hogs Flutter. Does she actually have power? A powerhouse? No. Okay, so. She doesn't need the Hog Splitter. Let's give her the Wyvern instead. swoosh okay yeah she's good oh wait a minute one second i haven't been looking at is facility mods oh my gosh handgun shotgun ammo press magnum ammo press yes why have i not been using this already we got some heavy duty as well okay that makes me rethink some of my strategy here. So I definitely want to give heavy duty ammo presses to people who can use them. Like for instance, wait, was it Wexler that I, no, no, it was, it was Jose. Yeah, it was Jose that I gave the pirate weapons to, right? Pirate weapons? Yes, which includes a 50 cal. So he is gonna go grab that 50 cal, that heavy duty ammo press. So he gets a heavy duty ammo press and also, I don't know, anything else? Does, does he have a fifth skill? Oh, he's an auto mechanic. Oh, I didn't realize he was an auto mechanic too. Why do I have two of those? Don't care about the outcasts, they're all about to be gone anyway. I don't care about a lot of this stuff here. Oops, soldering station, why not? Ooh, some light vehicle upgrade kits, yes. Okay, he is much better equipped now. Um, so let's definitely find somebody else to give. Oh, Funky Cold Medina. Let's, uh... What does she have? What? She's my doctor. She's got powerhouse as well. Oh, she's got the heirloom conda. That thing's nice. And a shotgun. I guess I can just give her... Shotgun ammo press? Also heavy duty. And then let's give her this boy. And... Oh, why not? Sure. And some suppressors. She's, she's my doctor, so let's see. Do I have any pill press? And espresso machine. Okay. Sanchez. Dirty Sanchez. Utilities. Oh, wait. She's got, she's got a rucksack on. What 
the heck? Hey, you put that away. Well, that's what happened to all the ammo. Sanchez was hoarding it. What was she again? Utilities. So she can grab that stuff. We are doing pretty well here. Oh, I'm at a choke here. I think somebody else had a shotgun. Was it Medina? Oh, but it's already got a choke. Okay, cool. Well, let's look at Rachel. Rachel's a noob. Let's just load her up with random stuff. Do I have a gardener? Who's a gardener? Anybody? Music? Nothing. Utilities? Medicine? Nothing. Firearms maintenance. Agri oh, it's him. He's agriculture. I'm going to want to load him up with some agriculture type stuff. But let's just let's just give her a bunch of random garbage. Oh, she doesn't even have a ranged weapon. Well, here. Here's a weapon with no bullets in it. Enjoy. And let's grab a special thing here. And I don't know, this... Maybe some of that. Maybe. Ooh, okay. Firearms. Let's just use this. I can't. Oh, right. I don't have. I don't need to respec yet because I'm so low. So never mind that sucker. Um. Mm, grenades. Why not? Oh, I didn't give any repair kits to my auto mechanics. Well, you know what? Who cares? You can just have a bunch. All right. And last but not least, Maddening Lee, who I was just playing. She's got a shotgun without a choke on it. Perfect. Let's grab that choke. And... This and this. Why not? Let's grab handgun ammo press. Sure. And an oven. An assortment of airtight containers. A brass collector. <laughs> Why not? And advanced toolkit. Okay, so. Now we're back to Ted. Yes, we're going to switch. Yes, we've got... We've got a new mission. But first things first, let's get him all equipped. <laughs> let's see here. Still Living Jake says, this looks really good on the Xbox Series X. Yeah, I agree. I, I'm, I've actually never been happier playing my own game than I am on the Xbox Series X right now. Okay, so he's a sharpshooter. I'm going to try using this. Always nice to learn something new. And I got the achievement for it. Nice. Let's make him a gunslinger. That'll be helpful for the final mission. Okay, so he's got... Okay, so let's grab him a bunch of ammo. Um, RTX Crusher, sure, why not? It's good enough. The main thing I want him carrying is a bunch of... No. Wait, was this right? Yeah, soil enrichment kit. Yeah, so let's get garden toolkit and compost bin. He is overloaded, and I do not care. Let's grab some other useful stuff that'll be good in the future. Let's top up our heels. Let's grab this. Let's grab that. Okay, so he's not in the best shape when it... Oh! He, no, 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 no! Okay, I almost <laughs> selected no again by accident. Oh, okay. 
We're good. Oh, where's the? Where are these people? Oh, is it these folks? Uh, Kyle. Hey, Kyle. No, Kyle. I want to talk to Kyle. Oh, what? Uh, no, you jerks. How many bullets you guys take to the head? Time for you to go straight to hell. Ah, oh, whoa, 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 what is this? Hey, oh, <laughs> I wasn't thinking of zombies getting in at the same time. Did these guys invite zombies into our house? <laughs> hey, I was trying to dodge that person. Alright. So, luckily, I'm in, <laughs> I'm in the base with the weirdest sieges. Like, we get so many Watchtower people, they're really good at keeping zombies from getting anywhere near the inside of the base. Oh, uh, wait, what is... Uh... I've got such a large community. Oh, I don't have enough... Okay, time to... Oh, wait a minute. Did one of my characters die? <gasps> I think? Why else would all these weapons be in here that weren't here before? Oh, that's strange. Okay, well, let's... I don't want to lose these weapons. They're pretty valuable. I don't need a bunch of curses, though. What? Have I forgotten a feature of this mission? Does this mission dump a bunch of stuff into my locker? And I just don't even remember? Or did, did I lose a character? I think I've got everybody. Okay, it's kind of funny how, you know, I don't know everything about this game. Like, I, like when we, um... You know, when we were shipping the original game, I was not on on the team that was building the legacy missions. Like, I, I, made, I did make some of the missions myself, but it was mostly, like, the side missions, the little non-essential missions. Uh, I was not... I was not on the legacies, and so the legacy missions are actually the ones that I know the least about. Like, I've... You know, I mostly know them from playing through them as a player at home. And I've only... I've only, um... beaten the game a handful of times. Uh, on you know, in, in my game at home, so I do a lot of like spot tests, uh, but I don't do a ton of like full-on playthroughs of the game, except just on my own time. And and the way that I play open-world games, it's I mean I spend more of my time doing side content than. Um, than actual mainline stuff. Like, I usually, like, in Skyrim, you know, I never fought dragons. In Oblivion, I never opened gates. And so, in State of Decay, I very rarely legacy. <laughs> and I'm and I'm not uncommon in that regard. I think, I think a lot of people don't legacy all that much. Okay, here we go. So yeah, so I end up, you know, each time I play through the legacy missions, it's like I'm, it, it, it's one of the few parts of the game that really is unfamiliar to me. When I see what we built here together, I know this place will stand the test of time. Okay, so Rand of the Court says it's it's from the dead hostiles because they were because they were died inside the base and they got auto looted. That makes sense. 
because I was worried because I was like, I mean, I knew that that kind of thing might happen if one of my own people somehow got lost, but I didn't realize that they had gotten auto looted because they died in the base. That's fascinating. See, I'm sitting here discovering new things about my own game because, I mean, a game like this, it's so complex. One person never understands every detail of it. You know, even, you know, even like the person who ostensibly is supposed to be, you know, in charge of the design of the game. There's lots of details in this game that I fully entrust to other people to manage, and this is one of them. It's so funny to me, like, the face of that guy, my leader, um, comes from somebody from the, from the neighborhood of where the, where, the, where the lab is. And so I know that guy, so it's funny seeing him be the leader of this community. Especially because I know his voice, and his voice is very different from the voice that he's using in the, uh, in the game. All right, well, I've finally got my Dread Builder Legacy. Here's the problem. I've been sort of like idly playing in Dreadvers alone without legacying. I've gotten really used to Dread, and I actually kind of feel like I want to play Nightmare now. So I just unlocked the Builder Legacy for Dread, which is really useful if you're going to be playing more Dread. But I kind of want to do Nightmare now, and so I'm going to be playing without the Builder Legacy. <laughs> so, cool. Um, and... You can see, like, I've, I've legacied so few times. My, my character pool isn't even full. You know, I've, I've got plenty of room for all these people. So I guess I'm just going to say, yep, keep all these folks. And now here we get to watch the credits, which I think we did in the last video that I shared, too. So really, my, my videos of State of Decay are just about looking at my name in the credits. That's all it's for. So, um, Greetings Car says, so legacy is like New Game Plus? Kind of, yeah. So, so the way that legacying in our game works is um, you uh, you complete a legacy and it, and it unlocks a special power that you can then use in future games. Um, there's only four of them. Um, I'd love at some point for that system to be more interesting than it currently is. Hey, look, it's me. Um, but uh, but yeah, but that is that is sort of uh, the way it works. So yeah, it's kind of like New Game Plus. You can play again, and this time you've got a new power. Um, and then if you want to go up in difficulty level, you've got to re-earn all of the legacies at each of those difficulty levels, um, which kind of gives you something to do if you're sort of advancing up the difficulty levels. Is like I said, you know, I'm going to probably play my next game in Nightmare, uh, which means uh, I'm going to, you know, have to start with no legacies again and have to start from scratch, which is fine. Uh, I mean, I'm not really starting from scratch because I can start with new characters, I mean, with, with existing characters who whose inventories I will have filled, just like you, you saw there. So, yeah, what I'm probably going to do next is start, in, start a new game on Nightmare difficulty and, uh, and bring in some of those characters that I, uh, that I, that I saved from my previous games. Uh, uh, Greenscar says, so oh, the characters achieve legacy, not the player? No, the player, so I, as a player, I do get the legacies. Legacies are now mine forever, and they're, they're unlocked at the account level. So it's not about the... It's not about the characters, but the characters also get carried over. Um, so basically, I can start a new game, and when I pick my three characters to start a new game with, I can choose from among those older um, those older characters that I've that I've you know banked from previous playthroughs. So, anyway, so so Adam Beltran has got a question about the UI. So yeah, I'm, since we're sitting here listening, looking at the credits, uh, I'm happy to answer questions. Awesome Twitch dude um, asks if I voted for Game of the Year yet. I don't think there's actually, like, when a game says that it's Game of the Year, I think what it's relying on is just the idea that some journalistic publication has given it a Game of the Year award. That there's no formal Game of the Year uh, that's voted on in any kind of formal way. It's not like we've got an Oscars or something like that. The closest thing we have is like maybe the Game Awards. At least that's, I think, what. Jeff Keighley is trying to do is to turn them into the Oscars of the game industry. I don't know if they're quite at that level yet, but that's probably the most centralized source of, you know, game of the year type awards. Um, really, it's just, you know, like 
I don't know, Kotaku is going to have games that they consider to be the games of the year, and, you know, Rock, Paper, Shotgun will have some kind of awards they do, and IGN will have some kind of awards they do, and PC Gamer will, or whatever. Like, there's all these different publications that'll have um, games of the year, and then if you get game of the year in any of them, you can say that your game is game of the year. Uh, So that's why you have multiple games each year having game of the year editions, uh, because that, yeah. Uh, so Adam Beltran says, what if they made the mini-map square? Left of the square is life, right of the square is stamina, top of the square is gas for the vehicle you're going to get into. That's certainly one way we could have done it. I mean, the thing about UI that's interesting is that, you know, there's never one solution that is the only good solution. There's always lots of different options you, options you should choose from. And so it's always kind of a combination, because there's definitely choices you can make that are ineffective. There are choices you can make that make the, make it harder for players to understand the game. And so you want to avoid those. And that's discoverable. You can find out that a certain solution is bad or, or unhelpful, or that one solution is bad better than another, but there's always going to be multiple peaks on that graph. There's going to be multiple solutions that work well enough for players. And so at that point, it just kind of becomes, you know, a, a, an artistic choice. You know, the reason why our, our HUD looks the way it does is partly just nostalgia and consistency. It's, mo- you know, State of Decay 1 had a round mini-map with the curving health bars and health and stamina bars around it. And it was familiar and nice. And because we weren't changing the health and stamina system all that much, there just wasn't much of a reason to vary from it. Now, if in a future State of Decay game we did decide to use a very different health and stamina system, then we probably would change the HUD to match it. But when we weren't changing it, it felt like you know staying consistent with what you know long-term players of the franchise were familiar with was a good choice. And so you know they would immediately be able to drop in and understand what was going on. So we kind of kept it fairly consistent, mostly because of that. Court asks, how do video game credits work? If, like, person A has a certain job, leaves the company, and then person B takes over that job, then are they both listed as having that job? Is person B listed as having their first job and their new job? That is very complicated. Um, there are, um, I think, usually... Uh, di- so different studios handle it different ways. There isn't actually... So the film industry has got a central body or multiple central bodies that determine how credits are supposed to work in different parts of the industry or like different disciplines within the industry um it's like you know if you have a best boy credit that means the same thing on every uh movie set and so that means that you know that when when you're being hired for stuff and you've got a resume people know exactly what everything means and that your credits really definitely mean something because there's no ambiguity about what different jobs are on different teams we don't have that in the game industry. There is no central set of rules about what each title means. And so, you know, somebody can be a design director on one title uh, on one game at one studio, and it means a completely different kind of job from a design director at a different studio. For some people, the design director is the people manager, whereas in another one, the design director is uh, like the game director or the creative, you know, director type person. Um, and so, you don't really know. Um, so each studio sets its own standards. Um, I've, I've worked at a studio before who that would actually, if somebody left the studio before the game shipped, um, they would vindictively strike them from the credits, which I thought was crap. And I actually fought and got it, got that changed on the game that I was working on. Uh, because I thought even, even if you fire somebody, you still give them a credit. What the crap? You know, I mean, sorry. <laughs> like they did, they did work on that game. They're going to claim it on their resume. You shouldn't, you know, try to make it look like they're a liar that just seems vindictive and cruel so um so i'm not a big fan of that uh but it does people do tend to set up their credits uh so that like at the time that a game ships the credits usually look like what the team looked like at the time that they shipped and so like for instance if you had um an art director who left and was replaced by a new art director usually you'll credit the current art director as art director and um you might say art director and put two names under it, or you could do art director for the current person and then just do like some kind of special thanks or additional art or something like that for the art director who left. But it really just depends on a case by case basis. Because like if the first art director left after only a few months and then the new art director spent most of the the the, the you know time of the game as art director, they should get probably sole art director credit. But if the new art director has only been, you know, they only shipped, you know, they were there for the very last couple of months, but the other person was the art director the whole time, you definitely probably want a shared credit on there at the very least. Um, But so it's a very case by case thing and each studio has their own standards. And so you just kind of like play it by air, by ear and wing it. Um, We had an especially, um, you notice how long our credits are right now. It's because 
we basically have done separate credits for each iteration of the game. So we've got, you know, the Juggernaut Edition credits, which is just who the team was at the time we shipped the Juggernaut Edition this past March, which is a very different set of people from the people who shipped, you know, Heartland and the people who shipped Daybreak and the people who shipped the original release of the game. And so we basically are sort of these credits are showing snapshots of each of those stages of development. You can see who was in charge and of, of different departments and who was, you know, doing different roles, who was, you know, you might even see some people go, you know, go from, from uh, a sort of a, a no frills title to a senior title over the course of, of, of different, uh, different iterations of the game. So, yeah. Yeah, like a couple of people, Steve Theodore, Jason Minters, uh, Matt Heinegger, no longer at the company, but they still have credits here for Daybreak because you know they were there, they did work on that. World building director, uh, James McMillan, that was his title around the time of Daybreak. Um, I think he had a different title prior to Daybreak, and then he left the company afterwards. So, so but we were getting this little snapshot. Oh yeah, and there, we just saw Henry Goffin credited as something i didn't see what his credit is there he probably was not credited as uh as product lead which is what he is now so yeah there's all kinds of interesting just you know details that go into into the way credits work <laughs> adam beltran asks who was the juggernaut before he got infected did he have a name what did he do so there's there's some dialogue or maybe it's text somewhere in the first state of decay that describes the juggernauts as being like the enormous overweight sons of some particular family in Trumbull Valley. Um, and so that was sort of the original sort of like tongue in cheek explanation that just there's this family with these, just these, you know, a bunch of similar looking huge sons. Um, but that, you know, that, that answer doesn't really hold up to scrutiny. Um, in uh, Lifeline, which um, I did uh, some of the writing for, um, we sort of, opted for a different kind of explanation. We didn't actually give an explanation, but we had Sasquatch. Um, when you were hunting freaks uh, with Sasquatch, he would he would ask some of the right questions. He would ask, like, why do we have the, these, these weird mutant freaks? How come they're so similar to each other? Why isn't it like there's, you know, why aren't there a hundred different kinds of freaks? Why are there only a few specific types that these, you know, certain zombies, uh, uh, co you know, coalesce into. Like, what, what does that mean? And so he kind of gives these suggestions of, like, you know, how does a juggernaut put on all that mass? They're much larger than a normal human. How does that work? And those questions that he asks are the kinds of questions that I have. And, and, and he sort of represents the way that I think about these zombies. And so I've got some answers in my head for, for how a lot of this stuff works. Uh, we don't share those answers, mostly just because we don't want people to think that's what the game is about. The game isn't about uncovering the mystery of the zombie plague. The game is about surviving in, in under you know harrowing circumstances. It's about the people and how they work. So we don't want to make the game about the mystery. So we don't really, you know, we, we raise some of those questions sometimes for fun, but we don't make the story about that. And we don't try to drive towards those answers. We don't try to give the false impression that that's what the story is going to be about. Um, but yeah, so that's the way I think about them anyway. It's like, oh, something mysterious in this disease makes certain zombies, you know, put on a bunch of mass or, you know, lose their arms or their eyes and develop these extra, you know, abilities, um, you know, or just fill up with gas and explode, you know, just something is making them do that. And it's, uh, it's, it's really hard to say what, um, you know, the, the, the survivors don't know. And so therefore, and, and there's no reason to let the players know either. Mm. Let's see here. So awesome Twitch who says, where's Brant's name? He's a character. I don't know if you mean he's a character like, oh, that guy, he's a character, or if you mean he actually plays a character in the game, because he doesn't. He played a character, he played two characters in the original State of Decay. Um, but he uh, he doesn't play any, he, he didn't, that was when, before we were a, a, a SAG house, before we had only like uh, union actors um, in, our, in our game. In State of Decay 1, we didn't have union actors, and so Brant could just do as many voices as he wanted. But if you're going to have any union actors working on your game, you have to have all union actors. And so we decided to go SAG, uh, with State of K2, which means Brant couldn't do a voice, which is fine because, you know, Brant didn't necessarily want to do a voice. So, you know, it, it worked out well for everyone. Still Loading Jake uh, asks, um, Cleo? Question mark? Question mark? Uh, I assume you're asking um, what kinds of, uh, if there's anything I can say about the mystery of Cleo. I think we might actually we're more likely to answer questions about Cleo than we are to answer questions about the freaks anytime soon. Uh, I really like Cleo. Cleo was sort of uh, on the original, you know, so so I joined the State of Decay team um, 
right after the original game shipped, so I had nothing to do with the writing or anything in the original game. But I did a lot of the writing for um, uh, for Breakdown, and and at least some of it. You know, Andy and I shared the the load on Lifeline. Um, and then on the Year One Survival Edition, all the stuff with Cleo, I, I, I wrote a lot of the, the Cleo stuff and how Cleo was going to work and how Cleo sounded on the radio and stuff like that. So Cleo is like my baby. I love Cleo. Um, and so I it, I do have an ambition to sort of um, to give some closure to the Cleo story on in State of K2 because State of K2 is also my baby. So at least now, you know, I've, I've inherited Cleo, State of K2 as my baby. So I do want to to make a Cleo make a little bit more sense by by the end of my work on State of K2. So hopefully that. Uh, uh, that that will will come to pass at some point. <laughs> awesome Twitch dude says Cleo is definitely evil. I need more story. <laughs> well, you can think what you want about Cleo. I've got my own opinions about Cleo. Oh, Adam Beltran says uh, I am super excited for the double points coming to Daybreak. Thank you. Yeah, that was uh, something. So that was actually. Um, that was Brian's idea. So as so Brian, um, he went on an extended vacation, kind of similar to mine, and um, he. But before he left, he like came to me. and was like, "Hey, Daybreak needs some help. <laughs> we're we're not earning enough rewards in Daybreak." And so he just gave me a quick rattled off a quick a couple of ideas. You know, we need to make um, some of the rewards unlock more easily. We need to you know uh, make uh, you know give people more prestige. We need to make Cleo ammo a lot easier to get. And so. Um, yeah, so a lot of that stuff uh, is is on the table as uh, as things we can add. So I'm looking forward to that too because I might actually play a little bit more Daybreak. If it's going to be more rewarding. Um, so still loading. Jake says, "When is that?" Uh, I don't actually remember. The nice thing about being on sabbatical is I wiped my mind of everything I knew about what was coming out when. And so you can ask me those questions all day and I can't give you any answers because I've literally forgotten. Uh, in a couple of weeks, I'll go back to work and I'll have to start remembering all that stuff again. But for now, I just get to play the game and have fun. Um, so... I guess that's probably enough Q&A for this video where now people have basically just been watching my little face sitting down here talking uh, while nothing is happening on the game screen. But... <laughs> oh yeah, so um, Still Loading Jake says, Oh, that's fair. Yeah, I'm, I'm the same when I go on leave. Yeah, like the whole point of going on leave is that I can, I, I can vacate my mind of all the stuff I need to remember from work. That's actually just a huge part of what makes work stressful is the fact that I have to keep so much in my head all the time. It's like, you know, I come home from work or I, you know, in this case, I move this barrier and I just walk into the rest of my house. And, you know, uh, it, like everything else I do is harder because there's a certain part of my brain that's taken up with remembering all the stuff from today that I have to carry into my work day tomorrow. And just not having that makes life so much simpler. But... So Adam Beltran asks, are you playing another game tonight? I'm not quite sleepy enough yet. So yeah, why don't we wrap up this video and maybe I will play something else. Maybe something a little bit, uh, I don't know, more informal. Maybe something like Call of Duty. I don't know. Anyway, thanks for being here. Subscribe or whatever.